What is going on everyone? My name is Andy. Welcome back to another FPL video. Today it's Double Game Week 25 watch list time. I'm not necessarily looking at just Double Game Week players for this week, but I'll explain why when we go through and I'll quickly show you my team, show you how I stand right now, and then why I'm looking at particular players. So if you enjoy that kind of video, please do give it a like and hit subscribe if you're new around here. I have partnered with Fan Team for this video as well. They have a Champions League knockout game, right? So it doesn't matter if you didn't play uh, for the group stages. This is just for the knockout. There's 250,000 euros euros worth of prizes including 25k for the winner uh, so if you want to check that out there is a link in the description below and i'll also show you a bit more of that later in the video so link in the description below if you want to sign up for that otherwise let's jump into this one okay so this is my team as it stands the reason i'm showing you this is because obviously if i've already got players they're not on my watch list so dallas and bamford for this double game week come in are not really on my watch list, right? I don't have any other Southampton players. Um, I've only got two Leeds players. So obviously there's Danny Ings, Vestergaard, etc. that we could look at from Southampton in a minute. And obviously I can add one more Leeds player too. The other thing that I'm kind of conscious of is that I've got Wood and Antonio. We don't know if Antonio will be fit. We'll wait and see what happens for... Um, oh, this is going out on Monday, so tonight's game uh, against Sheffield United. Then, obviously, we'll have to wait and see what happens there to then look ahead to Spurs' game. But long-term, I don't really want him anywhere, or at least in the medium term, over these doubles. And Chris Wood is obviously an issue as well. So I do need to get probably a striker in, but I've got two free transfers. And it's also worth pointing out, just in case you've not been following, I don't have a wild card either. Um, so obviously, I am... Yes, I'm thinking about double gaming 25 and 26, but I also have to think about how I'm planning for later weeks, blank game weeks and stuff like that, because I don't have too many chips left to get out of that. Although I do have my free hit left, which is quite interesting because um, a lot of people would have used it in, in game week 18. So this is how it stands right now. I think that striker spot in particular um, is interesting. And obviously the fact that I've only got two players coming up for this double, though it is a bit of a smaller double than last week. And I already had four uh, for game week 24. So that's how the team's looking. Let's talk about the players. So first up, obviously one of the striker spots could be Danny Ings. Now, Southampton do have a double game week in 25, but I do feel like one of the fixtures is almost a bit of a write-off. Not saying they can't keep a clean sheet, not saying they can't score against Chelsea, but it is going to be a tough game, right? Under Tuchel and even under Lampard, to be honest, the Chelsea defence is pretty solid, right? So that would be a difficult one, but then they do have Leeds away, and as we saw, Arsenal just scored four past them. Plenty of teams have put goals past Leeds. They always give up chances uh, in the style that they play, and to be fair, they also get a lot of um, injuries. So Phillips missed this weekend. They've barely had a first we sent about partnership for most of the season as well so i think leeds is a good game then everton i also think that's a fairly decent game at the moment sheffield united away and brighton at home probably a little bit trickier the key thing with ings for me is will he get more double game weeks we're all waiting this week to see if the double game week 26 fixtures get announced and if they do will we also find out if teams have got um doubles in 27 and 28 which they could do there's plenty of teams that have got more than one game to rearrange so yes game week 26 will be a big double but there's potentially going to be more after that as well so for me i think what is worth remembering when you're bringing in players which is going to be kind of a theme throughout this video is if you bring danny ings this week or danny ings in this week right easy to say and in game week 26 he doesn't have a double then he has three fixtures over the next two weeks right so he has chelsea Leeds, and everton so yes he has a double this week yes he could get massive points and then you could ship him out use some of those points for an extra transfer but if you bought in a player that had a double in 26, but only one fixture this week, they've still got three fixtures over the next two game weeks. So for me, I think for Danny Ings to come in, he would have to have more than just that double because I don't think the Chelsea game is particularly good. It's annoying because the, Le the Leeds game probably is quite good, but if he only has that, then Everton, Sheffield United and Brighton, he's not necessarily a player I want to bring in and keep. I think they're potentially better players with as good doubles in 26 and possibly better fixtures after that as well. So a lot will ride on him depending on what we find out for future double gaming. And so looking at the stats, right? So his XG per 90 is 0.27 so far this season. That's down from 0.49 last year. That's nearly halved, right? Not good at all. 0.3 expected assists. So he's doing fine, but nothing special and worse than last year in terms of getting into the right positions um, and getting those chances. More recently, last six matches, he's had nine shots in the box eight chances created again it's okay it's nothing special compared to a lot of the other players that we've got on this list i know he's been injured but this is looking at his last six matches which were against liverpool arsenal villa man united newcastle and wolves so to be fair he's had some pretty tricky fixtures in there and there's some easier ones to come right so he's definitely on the watch list if he gets more than one double 
And there is talk about him potentially getting a double, or Southampton obviously getting a double game week in 25, 26, and 27. If that happens, it's hard to turn down. Even with his stats looking worse than last year, once you get six fixtures in three game weeks, it's hard to turn down. So he is definitely in that spot to come in ahead of, uh, or instead of Wood and Antonio. But I would just like to see the fixtures absolutely locked in before I commit to a Southampton player. Because I don't think they've been great recently. And like I said, his numbers have come down. And that does worry me a little bit. So Lee's definitely a team that I want to continue to jump on for so many reasons, right? One, they constantly just keep on going and going for goals. doesn't matter if they're 1-0 up, 2-0, 3-0. They're going to keep on going and trying to get goals, even to the detriment of their defense. So bringing in a third player could be decent. Obviously, as well, I'm thinking ahead to game week 29 when we know Leeds will play. So if I'm trying not to use my free hit in that week, having three Leeds players could be decent, not only for the double in 25, but also then going forward. The problem is, you have if I've got two attackers, so Bamford and Rafinha, then I can't play seven double game week attackers in 26. So that is on my mind, but I think the fixtures are quite good. Wolves away, Southampton at home, then Villa, West Ham, Chelsea. Like, West Ham and Chelsea could be difficult. I think Villa... Are a good defensive team, but they've been they've shown recently they can be got at. Right, I know they kept a clean sheet against Brighton. Brighton had a lot of chances, and I expect Leeds to have the same. So I am looking at Rafinha because he's a great value option. But I am already thinking ahead to the fact that I can't play him and all seven of my attackers anyway. So is he just going to be a transfer out and then back in waiting to happen? So I get him in for the double, then I take him out at some point, and then I bring him back. That's a lot of transfers to use. So. I like him, and the fact that a lot of other people are going to own him this week makes me want to have him too, but there are a lot more factors at play. But in terms of his stats, 0.25 XG is basically, per 90, almost the same as Ings for this season, and then 0.23 expected assists. So his goal involvement is higher. Nine shots in the box, 10 chances created, 1.5 XG. So again, quite similar to Ings' last six games, but he has had it... A little bit easier, not completely easy, but a little bit easier. Arsenal, Palace, Everton, Leicester, Newcastle, Brighton. So decent. I think I just want to back Leeds, and I think they'll do well in both those fixtures. Uh, I think both those teams defensively can be gotten at. Wolves have been a good defence in the past. Southampton on the day can defend well, but I just back Leeds in both of those to get goals. And Rafinha and Bamford and Co are definitely going to be at the forefront of that. And I think because of his price, he could be held on to later. Again, he only has one double in 25 and he won't double in 26. So again, he has three fixtures over the next two. But because you gain that fixture in game at 29, he's potentially worth holding on for. So because of his price, I'm definitely looking at him. The, the biggest struggle I will have is which midfielder to take out. Grealish, uh, Salah, Son and Fernandez will all have doubles and so will Gundogan in 26, almost certainly. So it's hard to take any of those players out. I might have to take a big hitter out, which I don't particularly like. But it might be worth it for him to then fund a bigger move for the next player we'll talk about after we've had a quick look at Fan Team. So I said earlier on we're partnered with Fan Team for this video. This is a quick article here um, just to show you what it's all about. It is 18 plus, right? It is gambling. So you should be gamble aware. There's a link to that in the description below, begambleaware.org. So make sure you check that out as well. And there's also obviously a link to sign up and play. So there's 250 grand up for grabs, 250,000 euro, uh, 25,000 for first place. And it's all to do with the knockout stages, right? So like I said, it doesn't matter if you didn't play the group stage. It's a completely new game, um, which you can do. So yeah, like it says, imagine being able to set, select players like Messi, Ronaldo, Neymar. Um, obviously, you don't get to do that in the Premier League. Hopefully one day. It'd be nice to see Messi. And you've got all the rules listed as well, as well there. So I'll link to this article down below. Um, you can check it out if you want to. Uh, and then basically, there's no price rises or anything like that. Your budget might change depending on which teams get through to the knockout round. Uh, but obviously that makes sense because if a load of teams with cheap players get in, it's much easier to spread your budget around. So uh, the same as if it's all expensive players, they might have to increase the budget, etc. So you'll get free transfers as well. All that good stuff. You can go and read that article. Basically, it's 250 grand. And this is the team. So again, if any of you are playing the season-long Premier League game like I am through Fan Team, it's exactly the same in terms of picking players. You've just got a whole load of different players to play, uh, pick from. So Lewandowski, 12.5 million. Muller, 11 million. De Bruyne, 11 million. If he can get fit uh, i think you know city have got a great chance this year the way they're playing right now cristiano ronaldo i mean i would have to have one of ronaldo neymar messi if not more than one of them in my team and obviously like i said you just pick it super easy you just pick your squad of players 
and just go from there. So if you want to sign up, like I said, link in the description below. Great prizes on offer. Um, I've been playing the season-long Premier League game and it's been great. So I need to sign up to this one. And if you wanted to, like I said, link in the description below. Give it a go and see if you can win the top prize. So as I mentioned with Rafinha, I'm thinking about taking one of my big hitting midfielders out. Potentially Fernandes or Salah. I'll talk about that in my team selection video more getting Rafinha in and then spending the money on the striker now it could be Danny Ings if he do does have a double double then I could just get him in but either way I think Kane comes into my team either this week or in game week 26 now the fixtures right now West Ham away Burnley at home Pal uh, Palace at home as well are pretty decent but he should have a double in 26 and again Spurs are a team that have got more fixtures to rearrange so he is definitely someone that i've got my eye on 26 is really where i want him but if i don't fancy ings i will just bring forward my transfer to for kane instead and he's been brilliant this year right 0.42 expected goals per 90 is really good but he's also got 0.24 expected assists right which is really decent so altogether 0.66 expected goal involvement per 90 which is decent he's having a great season and obviously i think a lot of people have said that spurs have kind of missed kane well he's not been there his last six matches so not spurs his last his last six obviously he did miss some um 13 shots in the box nine chances created 1.91 expected goals uh, outside of penalties in those games he's played man city away that basically in the last six games he's only blanked twice right once was against man city Fair enough. Best defence in the league. The other one was in the 45 minutes he played against Liverpool. Outside of that, he's played West Brom, Sheffield United, Fulham and Leeds. And he has returned in all of those, right? So it looks good for the fixtures that he's got coming up. West Ham won't be easy, but there's points there and for Burnley and for Crystal Palace as well. The fact that he's only blanked in those two games makes me really just want to want him, basically. I think in game week 26, the teams probably with the two best doubles or the best double game week is probably going to be City and Spurs outside shot of Villa as well. We'll talk about them in just a second. So I really want to double up on Son and Kane. Yes, Fernandes and Salah are brilliant, but fixture-wise, it's a little bit trickier for them. And I think it's probably a little bit different going for Kane, right? A lot of people will be eyeing him up for game week 26, but not everyone. There's going to be two factors. One, not everyone's going to be able to easily get to him, especially without a wild card. Um, obviously some people will be using their wild card this week and again we'll probably do a video on that later this week but the second thing is if if the debate is you have to sell one of Salah or Fernandes to get Kane a lot of people aren't going to want to do that now maybe it will end up being the wrong decision but I want to play the fixtures and I think Harry Kane is a big part of that so I am definitely eyeing him up I'll be very surprised if I don't go into game week 26 with him it's just a case whether i bring him in this week or next and a lot of that depends on danny ings a bit like a butterfly effect if i don't get ings i'll just get kane now if i do get ings i can still afford to bring him in for my other striker in game week 26 but i think i'm ignoring the fact that spurs haven't done well recently you look at the fixtures they've played they've all been pretty difficult apart from that west brom game like liverpool city even brighton are defending really well at the moment so i'm not put off by that i think there will be points coming and with these fixtures it'd be hard to look past that i think there we go that is it for this one i might think about bringing in ollie watkins as well this week potentially instead of kane or instead of ings because he will have probably three games over the next two game weeks so potentially similar to ings but again we're gonna to have to wait on the fixtures all this depends on what the fixtures bring if we don't get any guarantee about future game weeks i may just not go for Ings, right and i'll just look to go for kane or watkins instead but we'll have to wait and see obviously i'll have more info of that later in the week if you have enjoyed this video please do give it a like and hit subscribe for new around here as well don't forget to check out fan team if you haven't already and you want to sign up for their champions league two hundred and fifty thousand uh, euros worth of prizes that are up for offer or up for grabs i should say including 25 grand for first place there's a handy link in the description below i'll leave it there i'll be back tomorrow with another video so make sure you check that out hit that like button hit subscribe and i will see you soon